Good day, my people. I hope you're all doing good on this wet Monday uh, afternoon. Wet Monday afternoon in, Li in Liberia. It's been a long time since I uh, since I came on here. Um, it's lovely to be here. You know, certain things in life, they're like riding a bicycle. You've heard that saying, right? Uh, once you learn how to ride a bicycle, you cannot unlearn it. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. So we'll start talking when we hit a thousand views. We're almost uh, at around what seven hundred views. When when was the last time I was on a podcast? It was in the month of March, I believe. Yeah, we're almost at a thousand views. It's good to be here, folks. Good to be. Um, in like in Liberia, in this very crucial period, very good. So, how are you all doing? Who all will vote tomorrow? <laughs> Those of you in Liberia, of course. Present, I will vote tomorrow. Um, I have. I have not come on here to discuss politics. I've come on here to discuss Liberia, which is more important than your candidate for president or candidate for representative. Uh, and I know what I'm saying. So, thank you. We're at 1,100 views. Uh, let's go to 1,500, then I'll begin to speak. Let me drink some water. My thoughts and prayers are with the people of Israel and Palestine. As they have been ravished by this senseless war. I pray for them and I wish them peace. Uh, and um, and all the best. It must be very difficult. I've, I've been watching since the weekend. I'm pretty sure many of you have been following as well what's been happening there in uh, the Middle East. Uh, nearly 50 years ago, well, it's almost exactly 50 years ago, they had the Yom Kippur War, and Israel was invaded in a similar fashion. Uh, they were caught unawares, and lots and lots of people lost their lives. And uh, this is exactly what we're saying. We're saying a repeat of that deja vu. Anyway, as, as much concerned as I am with what's happening in Israel and Palestine, that's not why I've come on here. I've come on here to talk about our own country. I want to greet all of you good afternoon good morning good evening it depends where it depends where you are um, I have come on here to talk about a most critical critical event that takes place tomorrow uh, the campaign closed officially yesterday and to a large extent it was very free, it was very fun, and was very, people were largely tolerant towards one another to a large extent. 20 presidential candidates 
some seven, eight hundred representative candidates, some, what, one hundred senatorial candidates. But there were some unfortunate interruptions. And by interruption, I mean incidents that led to unnecessary, unacceptable loss of human life. We witnessed that first in beautiful Foya, Lofa County, where people were killed. I saw some of the video clips and people being brutalized, dragged out of their homes and killed people who lived in a very same community with them, their own brothers, murdering them in cold blood. I, I, I struggle to understand how people, this, 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 this evil, deeply lodged within some people comes outside, out of them in that way. I don't understand that. That people will kill their own brother and sister in the name of political disagreement. I don't get it. I believe only an animal would do that. We should never ever resort to beating to death or shooting to death or physical confrontation of any kind whatsoever because we support different sides. I want you to remember this. Regardless of who you support in these elections, as important as these elections are, your lives will not be radically transformed by the outcome of these elections, regardless of who wins. Do not be fooled by what CDC tells you or what UP tells you or what Cummins tells you. None of these political leaders who aspire to become your president or remain your president is going to fundamentally change your lives. And therefore, your lives, as miserable as they are, should not be lost at the altar of some politician's greed for power or ambition for power. It sickens me, it saddens me, it breaks my heart that you must die for someone so that they may become president or so that they may even lose. Your mother carried you within her womb for nine good months, struggled with you and brought you into this world. And you think your life and the, the full measure, the, full, the, the total sum of your life is, is so that you die for we are or Bwaka or Cummings? You think that is what you are worth? You are worth way more than that. And you should not kill your brother and your sister for some politician who doesn't know you, who doesn't care about you. Today, people are grieving on the Somalia Drive. I saw that video of a young man, they are beating him to death. He's lying there helplessly, can't move. And I'm saying to myself, look at the kind of cannibalism, the animalistic behavior. Well, animals are better because when a lion kills another animal, it eats that animal. A lion does not kill a deer. For sport, it kills to eat, it kills to eat, it kills to feed. Why did you kill him? Why do you kill your brothers? Shame on all of you. I didn't come here to appeal to you, to appeal to your humanity if you've got any left. I came here to condemn you. Shame on you. Whether you are a sedition, whether you are a UP supporter, shame on all of you who resort to violence in the name of politics. The elections will end tomorrow, or perhaps we will have a runoff vote in November. Those who have died, do you really think that their death, their dying was worth it? Whatever the outcome of these elections? Absolutely not. My heart bleeds. I, 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 I value human life so much that when I see it senselessly, senselessly lost, it hurts me. 
Go out tomorrow and vote for your candidate. Vote for whoever you want. It is your choice. It is your, it is your right. I am going to do the same thing tomorrow. But do not kill your brother and your sister. Do not let your political disagreements transgress or deter it into physical violence. Do not do that. That is my advice to you. That is my plea to you. But to those of you who did what you did in FOIA, those of you who did what you did on the Somalia Drive yesterday, shame on you. You are despicable animals. You're not human beings. You kill a human being, somebody's child, because of your candidate. Would you change your life? Will you stop living in a zinc shack that your parents were born in, that they born you in? Will they give you a job? Do you know how horrible this country is? Regardless of who win these elections, this country has gotten so bad that it will take so long to uplift the people out of pow pow poverty. We are stricken by perennial hardship. And and and, and 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 indignity, and no politician will arise out of these elections to change your lives. Not even the one who's there or the ones who are aspiring to come. None of none of them are worth dying for. Just vote for the one you like, and spare us the violence. Vote for the one you love, and spare us the killing. Because nothing will change. Now you know it as much as some of you would like to disagree with me because your partisan sentiments are coursing through your veins right now, but you know it regardless of who you vote for, nothing is going to change fundamentally, radically in this country as it should, as it ought. You know it. You know it. You know your side is not going to change anything in this country. You know corruption is not going to come to an end anytime soon. You know those who are campaigning, ask, acting as though they're the Messiah, they're here to save the day. You know it. That they are all seeking an opportunity to enrich themselves as, as well. So don't kill yourselves for politicians. Don't kill yourself for Josh Weah. Don't kill yourself for Joe Baca. Don't kill yourself for Alice Cummings. Don't kill yourself for any one of them. Because your lives are important. They matter to those who brought you into this world. Those who call you their loved one. Those who call you their son, their daughter. Your lives matter to them. Your lives matter to this country. I saw a video on Facebook of a woman who was calling the Mandingo people Mandingo dogs. How dare you call Mandingo people Mandingo dogs? How dare you? Talking, she says she's a sedition. God bless you. That nonsense you did, and you also tried. And we we're going to burn all the Mandingo people store on it, uh, yeah, yeah, in this area. Mandingo people are Liberians. Madingo people are industrious, hard-working Liberians. Madingo people are citizens of this country. They've got every right to be involved in politics. A Madingo man is running for president, Lucini Kamara. I wish him all the best. He's an industrious, hard-working Liberian man who contributes meaningfully to this country. Each year, he helps tons of people go to Mecca. To complete the holy pilgrimage. Something a Muslim man must do at least once in his life. Before he goes to Allah Almighty. How dare you call Mandingo people Mandingo dogs. And then I saw her. She came back on Facebook to say she's apologizing. Apologizing because her man threatened her. That if you don't apologize to, for, to the Mandingo people. For those uh, distasteful, unacceptable, uh, that, that language. I will take you back to your parents' house and I will dump you there and leave you. She said she did it because her man told her to do it, to apologize. So you didn't apologize because you realized by yourself on your own volition that what you did was despicable and unacceptable. You did so because your man threatened you. So that, excuse my language for that total business, you apologize. We will not accept total apology. You apologize for man business. 
You didn't apologize because you realized what you did was unacceptable. Shame on you. And I see she's in, uh, somebody posted a picture of her in a police uniform. A police officer spews such hateful, prejudiced, twisted, psychopathic language, sentiments. Shame on you. We will not accept your total apology when you truly, genuinely believe that what you did was unacceptable. Then we might consider it. What's wrong with you people? You don't die enough. 250,000 of you died in the war. Some of us have the, the best years of our lives robbed from us by these same bloody, bloodthirsty, greedy, self-centered, self-serving politicians. 15 years of our lives destroyed, set back as a country and as a people. And yet, you dare to attack and meme and murder your brothers and sisters in the name of politicians? There is no messiah in these elections. There is no messiah in CDC. There is no messiah in Unity Party. There is no messiah anywhere whatsoever. So they know what dying for. And in fact, the only one and true messiah died for us, Jesus Christ. So how dare any man who calls himself a, pol a, a politician expect me to die for him? We're all one people. Don't kill your brother for any politician. Go out tomorrow as I will do. Cast your vote however you feel for whomever you want. It is your right. People died for that right. So that they may have it and exercise it freely and fairly. And I also pray for a free and fair outcome. Not only do I pray for free and fair elections, I pray that the outcome of the elections may also be free and fair. Because I'm a Democrat at heart. I truly, to my core, believe that democracy, however messed up the majority thinks they ought to have their, their expression of their vote respected and in the, in the results. I believe that. The tyranny of the majority. They're not always right. But they're the majority. <laughs> and to all of you, my brothers and my sisters in CDC, my former friends in the Unity Party, I have nothing but love for all of you. Including those of you who have, who enjoyed yourselves. Thinking that you were bullying me and you were mocking me and you were saying whatever you wanted to say about me because of the decision we made to stand aside and watch as you all participated and enjoyed and exercised a democratic right to participate and to, tomorrow we all will exercise our collective and joint right to vote. I say I love you still. And after these elections tomorrow, hopefully, tomorrow, I hope it ends tomorrow. I really hope somebody can pull off the near impossible, which is an outright victory on the first ballot. I hope somebody can pull that off tomorrow so that we can spare ourselves all this madness can end tomorrow. Rather than having to relive it. Who wants to relive it? Who truly, as much as we know how difficult it is to win a first round outright victory, but who truly wants to have to go through a second round? A second round election is terrible. Nobody wants a runoff. Those of you who have been involved with it, nobody wants it. Pedro will be here. After the elections, we will still be here. We will still be involved. We will still help our people the way we know how. I love you all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Tyler Perry once said, one of the truest and most profound things I had ever heard from anyone. He said, some people in life are like a rocket booster. You know what a rocket booster is? When the rocket takes off, it's got these boosters and the boosters fall off intermittently. And what they help do is to increase, is to give thrust to the rocket as it surges its way into space. So some people are like that. 
They rocket boost us. You know, they begin with you. They take off with you. And, 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 and they may not get there with you because they were not meant to get there with you. Because those are boosters. They were not built for the certain altitude. Not attitude, altitude, the height, the distance which you were supposed to reach. And so sometimes in life it's like that. Regardless of where you find yourself. Some people are with you to help get you to a certain point. You are with some people to help get them to a certain point. But you're not with them to help get them to where they want to go. And so at some point you fall off. Not because you are incapable to continue the journey. But that is the designated point at which you sever ties and go on your way. And so there is no malice. It's all off. And this gift that God has given us, uh, by God's grace, will always be with us. And after these elections, I hope we'll still have a country called Liberia. And I believe we will. In my heart, I believe we will. If you got trouble, if you believe that you've been cheated, compile all your evidence and go to court. And we will help defend your right. The courts are there. You're entitled to go to the courts. But don't incite people's children to die for you. For your victory. If you believe you've won, you go to court. And we will defend your right to access fair trial in the courts. But don't call on somebody's child to die for you so that you may become president or so that you may continue to be president. And this message is to everyone. It is apolitical. It is a patriotic message. I'm sounding this to all Liberians. I don't care which side you're on. I have no interest in George Weah. I have no interest in Joe Bokai. Zero. May the best man win. Thank you all so much. God bless you. And may God save our state. Share love. Be an ambassador of peace. When you see people making trouble, or having a disagreement and it's heating up, you can step in and try to part them. If you feel comfortable and safe to do so. If not, leave. Do not stand around as the storm pelting begins. Because those stones, those rocks, those pebbles, they don't have eyes. Some people say, why we were not talking? Our voice is so important, it's so critical. There are times you must be silent. Yes. As big as your voice is, there are times you must fall silent. One of my proudest moments before I close... Is how I was able to by and large remain quiet for several months since March. Is I'm very proud of myself. That I made it. You know, it's like a drug addict or a recovering alcoholic who struggles to avoid breaking the cycle, the cycle of sobriety, staying sober, staying away from the substance that you abuse. It's difficult. That tantalizing urge, that craving, is always on fire inside of you. But you struggle. <laughs> that, that, that is pretty much what I experience. And I'm proud of myself <laughs> that I, by and large I was able to keep this big mouth quiet. <laughs> I love you. I love you all. Go out tomorrow and vote. I will go tomorrow and cast my ballot and I will be here and I will leave when I'm ready to leave. Love you. Liberia belongs to all. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye.